Welcome to the podcast. My name is Dr. Noor Gajraj. Let's talk about the blood of youth, exploring blood therapies for anti-aging. The aging blood, a shift in the system. As we age, our blood system undergoes substantial changes. The concentration of certain molecule shifts, creating what researchers call a pro-aging milieu. This means that pro-aging factors increase. Levels of inflammatory factors like interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta chemokines and proteins accumulate. These factors drive chronic vascular inflammation, cognitive impairment, and other age-related pathologies. Anti-aging factors decrease. The levels of crucial rejuvenating factors decline. This includes proteins like growth differentiation factor 11, which promotes tissue regeneration and the longevity factor clotho, whose reduction is linked to muscle atrophy, cardiac aging, and neurodegenerative diseases. This imbalance contributes to the functional degradation of multiple systems throughout the body. Cellular senescence in the blood. The aging of our blood isn't just about molecules. It's also about our cells. The functionality of key blood cells declines with age, contributing to systemic aging. Hemopoietic stem cells. These stem cells gradually lose their ability to self-renew, leading to a decline in their regenerative capacity. They also begin to show a myeloid skewed differentiation impacting the immune system. Immunocytes. Aging T cells become exhausted and drive inflammation, while aging beta cells, known as ABCs, increase, impairing the immune system's ability to fight infection and increasing autoimmune risks. Red blood cells and platelets. Red blood cells lose their oxygen carrying capacity and platelets become hyperactivated with mitochondrial dysfunction, significantly increasing the risk of thrombosis and heart disease. Endothelial cells, the cells lining our blood vessels undergo senescence early, impairing nitric oxide production and increasing inflammatory factors, which drives vascular aging and cardiovascular disease. Therapy number one, heterochronic parabiosis, one of the earliest and most profound blood therapies studied, is heterochromic parabiosis, a surgical technique that connects two animals of different ages to share a circulatory system. While this is an experimental animal model and not a human therapy, its findings have been transformative. Heterochronic parabiosis has been shown to rejuvenate the nervous system, improve synaptic plasticity, memory, and cognitive function, restore the circulatory system, attenuate neurovascular aging and reduce cardiac hypertrophy, improve the musculoskeletal system, enhance muscular structure and promote bone repair in aged animals. Hemopoietic parabiosis has demonstrated that exposure to a young system milieu can reverse age-related decline across multiple organ systems, pro proving the concept that factors in blood can drive rejuvenation. Therapy number two, therapeutic plasma exchange. Given that aged blood contains pro aging factors, a key strategy is to remove them. Therapeutic plasma exchange, a procedure already used for autoimmune diseases, has shown promise in this regard. Therapeutic plasma exchange works by replacing a patient's plasma with a replacement fluid, effectively diluting the levels of harmful pro-aging factors. 
Research has shown that therapeutic plasma exchange can improve cognition. A single treatment in aged mice improved cognitive performances and reduced neuroinflammation. Reverse epigenetic changes. A human clinical trial demonstrated that therapeutic plasma exchange induces epigenetic rejuvenation and reverses age-related immune decline. Reduce amyloid beta. For Alzheimer's disease patients, therapeutic plasma exchange has been shown to effectively remove amyloid beta, which is linked to slowing cognitive decline and stabilizing cerebral perfusion. Therapy number three, platelet-rich plasma or PRP. Platelet-rich plasma is a popular and widely used blood therapy, especially in orthopedics and dermatology. It's an autologous therapy, meaning it's derived from the patient's own blood. PRP is rich in cytokines and growth factors that promote stem cell proliferation, angiogenesis and tissue regeneration. Research has shown that PRP can repair tissues, promote wound healing in chronic conditions like diabetic foot ulcers, improve musculoskeletal health, alleviate pain and inflammation in osteoarthritis and improve tendon regeneration. Anti-aging dermatology, stimulate fibroblast proliferation and collagen secretion for skin rejuvenation, support reproductive health, increase oocyte, female egg count, and folliculogenesis in aged mice with some clinical applications showing similar promise. Therapy number four, extracellular vehicle, vesicles transfusion, a more advanced and targeted approach involves extracellular vesicles. Extracellular vesicles are tiny vesicles released by cells that carry molecules like proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, for instance, microRNAs, and are a primary mechanism for intracellular communication. Extracellular vesicles, isolated from young plasma, and administered to aged organisms have been shown to rejuvenate the brain, restore synaptic function, improve spatial learning and memory, and reduce neuroinflammation. Extracellular vehicles can improve organ function, enhanced mitochondrial function in muscle and bone stem cells, reduce bone loss, and restore the stemness of senescent cells modulate the immune system. Extracellular vesicles can transfer telomeres to T cells, enhancing their proliferative capacity and immune defense. Extracellular vesicles transfusion offers a non-invasive way to reprogram aged cells and a youthful cargo, though standardization of preparation remains a challenge. The mechanisms of rejuvenation. So how do these therapies work at the cellular and molecular level? They target the fundamental hallmarks of aging. Epigenetic remodeling. Blood therapies can alter DNA methylation patterns and reverse the expression of age-related genes. Mitochondrial function. Young blood factors and extracellular vesicles can activate mitophagy, which is removal of damaged mitochondria, and promote mitochondrial biogenesis. Stem cell rejuvenation. HPV, HPB and PRP injections can activate and restore the function of senescent stem cells, enhancing the body's repair capabilities. Anti-inflammation. Therapies like TPE and platelet factor IV transfusion reduce circulating inflammatory factors and inhibit pro-inflammatory signaling pathways, combating inflammation. By targeting these interconnected hallmarks, these therapies can initiate a systemic rejuvenation. 
In conclusion, blood therapies for anti-aging are moving from science fiction to science reality. However, significant challenges remain. Ethical concerns, particularly regarding the re recruitment of young donors for certain therapies. Standardization, dosage, preparation protocols and efficacy are not yet standardized. Uncertain efficacy, most studies are still in animal models and species differences mean we must be cautious in translating results to humans. The future of blood therapy for anti-aging lies in combining these traditional approaches with emerging technologies like AI and advanced omics to create personalized, highly effective and safe intervention. This holds the promise of transforming our approach to aging. Thank you for listening. Please consider buying my book, 100 Pathways to Longevity, and subscribing to this podcast.